Electricity has been cut off to the Venezuelan embassy, and the standoff between supporters of opposition leader Juan Guaido and supporters of President Nicolas Maduro now in its third week. How long can this go on? RT correspondent Dan Cohen is joining us to discuss. Uh, so, Dan, first, what is the, the latest happening on the ground uh, at the embassy? Well, last night um, around 7 p.m. Eastern Time here in D.C., the, the main utility company, Pepco, as you said, cut off electricity, um, I think under pressure, it seems, from the United States government and the opposition, uh, the Venezuelan opposition. So the, the Embassy Protection Collective, as they call themselves, that's inside, is now in the dark except for whatever sunlight. So they can't charge their cell phones, right. their laptops, anything like that. They won't be able to communicate with the outside world. I reached out to Pepco, the company, this morning um, and they gave me a statement saying uh, that Pepco does not discuss the status of individual customer accounts uh, or, or service to individual properties basically none of your business they don't want to talk about it um, so uh, lawyers I've spoken to have told me that this uh, is actually in violation of the um, Vienna Diplomatic Convention and Article 25, which basically says that um, the this the state, the United States, uh, has to provide um, services uh, to the facilities of the uh, uh, of the mission. Um, so basically, they can't do this. Right. So the host country has to make sure that they keep their their stuff going on. Exactly. Like plain, it's, you know, in lawyer language for for that there. And, and then what about the the reports of supposed violence happening? Uh, outside? Well, it's been very tense outside. I mean, when I've reported from the ground uh, outside the embassy, um, when I tried to talk to the opposition, uh, many would become very aggressive with me. One man just simply stuck his middle finger in my I face. Flipped the bird. I saw the photo. Right. Um, and they don't really want to talk. Um, but there has been uh, many attempts by the uh, supporters of the collective inside to get food and to get food to deliver food. Right. Um, right. There was a problem with that last week. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's not clear how much food they have inside. The, Venezue the opposition, the Venezuelan opposition and their supporters have essentially put a siege on the place. And so yesterday, uh, an elderly man attempted to just throw them a cucumber. There we see, that's the toss. And this man, a 72-year-old Vietnam veteran, um, was taken down by about five or six Secret Service agents. Um, I think he, you know, he may have resisted a little bit, but uh, they threw him to the ground and uh, his face was bloodied up. And I mean, he's a 72-year-old man. Doesn't seem like he presented much of a threat to me. Right, these are like 20-something, 30-something-year-old guys. Exactly. Maybe a little bit of excessive force. They didn't call an ambulance. The people inside the embassy told me that uh, they had to call an ambulance, and he sat there bleeding for several minutes. Now, if you compare that to uh, what we saw um, from an opposition supporter who actually chased a Code Pink member, one of the, one of the supporters of the collective inside, right. chased her with um, a megaphone um, and was actually hitting her in the head. He assaulted her. He assaulted her directly in front of a Secret Service agent. I mean, uh, that, yeah, what here we see it. There? Basically, that, under that white bag is a, is a megaphone that we'll see. So it's not a bag hitting her. Exactly. It, it is a large There's piece of metal. And see, she's saying, she's saying to that, uh, that that police officer, he's hitting me, and the police officer is. doesn't do anything. So there seems to There's be a, the bullhorn. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. We see a very clear double standard of how the police are treating one side versus the other. And, and real quickly, Dan, what is the White House saying about what's actually happening on the ground in Venezuela? Because as we know, Juan Guaido is still walking around free and has returned to the National Assembly. Well, there was a remarkable report in the Washington Post that basically says the Trump, that Donald Trump, is getting tired of this uh, Venezuela. Venezuelan coup. He's starting to, to question his uh, administration's hardline authority, pushed first and foremost by John Bolton, also by Senator Marco Rubio and Secre Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And he called uh, last week, Trump on Fox News called uh, President Nicolas Maduro a tough cookie. He's surprised <laughs> he's been able to hold yeah. out this long. And the coup seems to be stalling out. And it may uh, become a political liability going into the reelection campaign for 2020. So Trump um, may decide, well, you know, this is not really worth it anymore. I want to focus on Iran. Right. Right. Move over to a new enemy. As always, appreciate your take on all of this. Dan Cohen, thank you. Thanks. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.